welcome back to the Tax Advisor and Biz Coach Success Podcast. The purpose of these episodes is to help entrepreneurs become more successful, avoid tax and other business headaches. Remember to tune in frequently as we will be sharing tips, secrets, and expert recommendations in how you can manage your finances, improve wealth, and grow your business. Please like, share, and subscribe. Here's your host, Liz Soria. Welcome, welcome back, folks. This is Liz Soria, your host at the Tax Advisor and Biz Coach Success Podcast. And today, as always, I have another amazing guest joining me. And uh, our topic is going to be about real estate insurance um, uh, title uh, tips. And I have Kevin Tatcher, and he is with the Independence Title Company, or as he's known, the king of the title of South Florida. <laughs> Kevin, welcome to your show. It's such a pleasure to have you here. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, it's really my pleasure. It's always an honor, actually, to, to have experts like yourself join my, you know, my show. So tell me a little bit about your company and the service that you provide. Uh, that way the audience, my audience, understands a little bit more your expertise. Absolutely. So the company name is Independence Title. We're located right over here in uh, Central Fall Lauderdale. And one of the things I like to always start off and tell people that they don't realize is we offer a product that's different than any other type of insurance. Most insurances are purchased for future risk. So if you think about, let's say, car insurance, you think about, you know, will I get into an accident? Health insurance, will I be sick? We offer a unique type of insurance when buying real estate, which is called title insurance. Title insurance is going to check the opposite. So it checks in reverse. So we go back up to about 30 years checking for the root in title, which will basically tell clients that are buying, prospective buyers in the state of Florida, whether they own free and clear title to their property. And then we're gonna issue a insurance policy like any other insurance that is going to insure that coverage for the buyer that is purchasing that piece of uh, property. Very interesting, that is very interesting, yeah. And that is not a common service that is being offered by other title uh, insurance? Yeah, I mean, everyone offers it. I usually like to connect the dots between the different types of insurance okay. because a lot of people feel that, uh, you know, do I really need it? And, and I always tell people, would you drive your car without insurance? Uh, and with title insurance, another unique point is that it's only purchased one time when you purchase the property. So it's not like there's a ongoing premium. So there's a very low cost to buy into that policy to protect these buyers for the life that they own the property. Wow, that is excellent. Okay, so it's a one-time fee and so it's a well worth investment then, but you can only uh, purchase it on the time that you're closing on the property, is that right, uh, Kevin, or how is that done, please? Yeah, so it's usually done through the purchase. So we, we serve two roles in the industry. One is a title insurance company to issue the actual insurance policy. And then the flip side is the escrow agent. So we're the ones that are holding the money. So the buyer puts up a deposit, they get a loan. So we take all the money in and then we pay all the money out to the seller, the real estate agents and any other vendors that get paid. So we serve two roles. Usually one is tied to the other. So we usually do not handle one versus the other. So if someone said, I just want to buy insurance, we don't offer that. And if someone said, well, I just want you to handle the, the flow of money and I don't want insurance, we wouldn't handle that either. That's usually done by uh, real estate attorneys. Gotcha. And I think that's a very good point. If you don't mind, I kind of dig in into that because I know there's a difference and I do recall, and by the way, for the audience, um, you know, Kevin and I, I mean, we met quite a few years ago, uh, and it was in another uh, wholesale real estate group here in South Florida. And, and like I said, again, I'm, I'm really you know happy to have him in the show because I know he's gonna bring great content and value to, to everyone out there, especially because one of my niches is really real estate. And a lot of people are getting started, or well, others do have experience, but they're not aware of the different initial of you know, what's entitled insurance versus to uh, even a lien search, right? Which is something I wanted to discuss with you because you're an expert in that. And, um, and I, I say from my own experience, I had a bad uh, experience when I purchased one of my properties because um, the title company decided not to do a lien search. Um, do you want to get into that a little bit? Do you offer some kind of tips on that? 
Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things I like to tell people, I was going to actually, it's funny, I was going to change the way the world sees these types of searches because it's it's unique. And, and a lot of the buyers and real estate agents and investors, they don't understand that a lien search doesn't actually check for liens, believe it or not. Wow. That's a title search. So we do two types of searches. One is a title search, which is going to check everything that uh, is a public record. So everything that's recorded in the public record, typically tied to a name or legal description of a property, that's one type of search. And then the second type of search is a lien search that a lot of title companies do not order because the contract doesn't require it. And that type of search is going to check for uh, code enforcement violations. It's going to check for permitting, open, closed, and expired permits. And then the one I like to tell people, which they, they, are always, they always find amusing, is that the last part is they check for utilities, which is a water bill. And a lot of people do not realize, we, we've had closings with bills in the thousands, tens of thousands of dollars for years worth of water that somebody didn't pay on. Wow, you hit it right on the spot. And it's about, and I'll tell you why. Because that's exactly what happened to me at one of the properties that I purchased. Uh, and then when I went back to the title company and said, well, what's going on? I said, I thought that you had a clear title and everything was settled before my closing. And they said, oh, no, that's a lien search. We didn't look into whether there was any open, uh, you know, utility uh, bills. And anyhow, I ended up having to pay out of my pocket because apparently it just attached to the property. So whoever buys it now is responsible for that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and sometimes there's some different cities that if it's uh, tenant utilities versus owner utilities, it could be different. Some places are able to go after the owners for the tenants and, and some are not. Uh, but definitely it's, it's an important search. It's one of the bigger searches that we do in order to make sure that our buyers are uh, protected. So what really sets you apart is that, like you said, you have you know, an, an additional service, which is like you said, it's not only if someone can come and say, okay, I want you to hold my funds and escrow, but I can add this insurance to protect your assets, which is, you know, very, you know, beneficial for anyone who really is, uh, you know, want to have that kind of uh, peace of mind before they, 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 they purchase a property. Absolutely. You know, it's important. It's important. And you know, the challenge is that even if you order a lien search and utility bills come up and it's missed, one thing that sets us apart from some of the other companies is they don't own it then. They, they will turn the buyer away and tell them, file a claim and, and go get it paid somewhere else where we just cut the check. Uh, oh, wow. And there have been times, you know, we, it's a risk-based business. There are times where our searches have missed something and We've owned it. We own it. We pay the claim. And if we have to submit it to our insurance to pay because it's a little bit larger, we would be more than happy to do so to make sure that that buyer is protected. And, and we never want a client leaving feeling as if we didn't have their back and we weren't protecting them because when that problem arises is when they're going to come back to us, not at the closing table. At the closing table, we're typically there saying everything is great. It's going to be one, two, three, ten years later that these buyers are going to feel the issues coming up and they need to make sure that there's a stable company behind them that's going to own it and take care of that problem as quick as possible. And a point that I like to bring up, and if you don't mind uh, kind of going more in depth with that, uh, Kevin, since you're an expert in this, you know, again, when it has to do with permits and things like that, uh, uh, I'm sure from your experience, you have seen, especially, uh, we call it the newbies, where they come into rehab and, you know, uh, doing these major renovations to these properties, uh, where they have probably done some work in the property and, you know, they have a permit that was not taken out and now they have fines and things like that. Um, so how what would you recommend someone who's getting into the real estate and, and actually as an investor and, and watching out and, and being careful about this because with these kind of permits, that's going to be a major issue. Isn't that correct? Yeah, absolutely. It comes down to research, uh, understanding that the title company is only as good as the data that we can see. So we only insure the land. We insure the right to for that buyer to own free and clear land. We don't care about the house when it comes to title insurance. So we don't care about how many bedrooms and bathrooms. 
if the pool is done with permits, that's not something that uh, is related to our business. We care about the right to use the land, the bound. If you took like a diagram and you drew a box around the property, that's what we're concerned about, that that land, which is called the legal description, mm -hmm. is given to that buyer free and clear of any liens. But one of the tips I like to tell the investors is you're absolutely correct. Back in the old days, people would do a lot of work without pulling permits. They would close in carports and make them third bedrooms. They would close in patios and make them closed in family rooms because they wanted to add to the square footage of the property. Right. And understanding that as a buyer, if you're buying a property, you have your inspection period, which is usually 15 days okay. to uncover all of these items. The title company is not going to uncover these items for you. You either need to hire a home inspector or a general contractor, or you need to do the work yourself. So what I tell some investors is the first step is look at the property appraiser and the property appraiser is going to tell you how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, and how much square footage is the house. And if you see on the property appraiser that it says there's a, a carport, and then when you go to the house, you realize you step down into a bedroom, there's probably a problem. It wasn't done to code, because they would have had to raise the foundation to match the rest of the house to be part of the square footage. And the same thing if you go into a patio or a garage, and you see that the garage you know, the front five feet of the garage is the actual garage. But when you go behind that, there's no room for a car because it was turned into a TV room. Yeah. And those are the things you need to be careful of and to do your research to make sure you don't get stuck with that. Because if you're an investor that's going to buy and sell, and you could have a problem. And, and you know, and, th and this is the reason why I brought this up because unfortunately, you know, a lot of people don't realize it. Again, especially, you know, newbies who are coming into the market, as we know, um, you know, the market's high. It's good for, for the sellers right now uh, versus to what happened almost, you know, a couple of years ago, which we went through that big bubble of real estate, right? And um, I got the feel that we're going through that again, but the inventory is low, which makes a big difference to what happened a couple of years ago. Yeah, absolutely. And the prices aren't inflated as much. The lenders were being a little bit more conservative. But I tell people, I was here in the good. I was here in the bad. I went from doing, uh, you know, 20 or 30 closings a month when I first got into the business down to two or three in a given month. Wow. Uh, I'll never forget years ago, I used to pay my assistant on my credit card because we didn't do enough closings to meet payroll. Yeah, and now you turn around and fast forward as the market grows, you know, we're doing right now on average 90 to 100 closings a month. Uh, so I was here with the good, then I was here through the bad, and now we're back here through the good again. And we do see a slight turn. I did predict uh, about five years ago when I knew we were coming up with the presidential election, I did predict that this election, we were going to be solid for the first year. And then starting the second year, we were going to see a slight decline. And now I think we're going to see it even more coming into 2019. And we're prepared for it. We're prepared to uh, market to different types of clients. That's one of the unique things that we do differently is we market to every clientele. So we have real estate agents. We have lenders, private lenders, regular lenders. We have uh, investors that buy. So if one is slow this month, the other side is typically busy. So when we get into a declining market, we're now going to be able to focus back on the investors that are hopefully going to buy and rent to these homeowners that are facing foreclosure, short sale, and having to move out of their house. That's excellent. So not only, I mean, from your expertise as a title, you know, insurance uh, pro, but you also can help uh, buyers come out and in, in, in a system with uh, actually borrowing money from lenders and, uh, and things like that. That's wonderful to know that. Absolutely. Uh, because I think one of the things that when we invest our money, especially something that we want long term, is we want to be able to be, you know, have a backup of a company who has the expertise in it. And uh, that's wonderful that you really do, uh, you know, have that additional service besides what you do. Um, right now speaking, uh, I mean, what, how do you see, you say that by next year, your prediction is that uh, it's going to be declining. Um, how can you tell the red flags or the signs um, based on the market, how it is right now? 
Well, I think like any business, you're able to track, you know, you said we met at a real estate investment club many years ago. And that same investor is, is a very good friend of mine. And yes. he was probably one of my first clients. And I've been doing this 15 years this past July. So, you know, we can look at, thank you. We, we can look at the uh, signs of the market and I can see the investors that are busy have lighter inventory now. The ones that were buy, fix and selling two to three deals a month are now doing one to two deals a month. Uh, the lenders that were lending uh, five to 10 loans a month are now doing three to five loans a month. So, you know, we're able to tell that we know that we, cause we have, we value our relationships, which is the most important part in our business is it's all about the relationship. Absolutely. So I have open conversations with these investors and say, Hey, investor, what's going on? Hey, realtor, what's going on in your market? Tell me, what can I do to help you? And they say, well, inventory is light or I'm having a hard time getting this house sold. It's been sitting on the market for so long. So I, I think we're seeing that there are more challenges in the market. And we can also tell by our numbers. If we're statistically growing X percent every year, year over year, we can look at the uh, market factors to say what's inventory, how many homes are listed, how many homes are closing. And then we can tell. I mean, we're one of the top five title companies in Broward County for sure. Uh, I'm not 100% sure statewide, but definitely here in Broward County, we were ranked in, in uh, 2017 as one of the top five. So, you know, right. we have our pulse on the market to know who's doing deals and, and how the market's going. And I can reach out to real estate brokers and say, are your brokers doing business? If you have uh, one of the larger firms that we represent, Charles Rutenberg Realty, uh, they have over 800 agents and I can look at them and say, what is your agent count? Are your agents growing? Are you growing at the same pace you were growing last year? Is it down? So we're able to see our pulse on, on not only the amount of deals, but we could see what the industry professionals are doing. The insurance company, the other insurance companies, the home inspectors, the lenders, the general contractors. So by networking with all these people, we have a great pulse on the market to tell where are we going? And the consensus across everyone is we're in a slight decline right now. I don't think it's going to hit rock bottom like it did. Me neither. But we're definitely, we're definitely in a, a downward uh, market right now, which is just means it's time to change your business in order to grow. Change your business model. Focus on a different part of the business. So it's shrinking. Inventory is definitely shrinking at this moment. And but again, like you said, I I, I have to feel in either, and uh, I'm not into so much like you are in a daily basis into the real estate, uh, you know, sector. But yeah, I believe the inventory is definitely shrinking at least here in Florida. Um, again, I mean, it's not going to be a major burst of a bubble like it was almost, you know, 10, 11 years ago, right? Um, when we had so much distress here. One of the things I wanted to bring up, and I think it's important because I think there's some confusion out there. And uh, one of the things I did learn when I was uh, actually um, uh, in the meetings uh, with the real estate group is the difference between what happens with an attorney holding your escrow versus to a title company like you? You have certain um, uh, laws and regulations that a lot of people don't realize that is a differential to what an attorney can hold their monies in escrow. Can you explain that a little bit, please, Kevin? I yeah, absolutely. I mean, believe I mean we're pretty similar. There are three different uh, let's call them categories of holding escrow. One is a real estate broker. A real estate brokerage is able to hold escrow for their agent's deals. And if there's a dispute, they have a resource to submit that to what's called an escrow disbursement dispute. Okay. And it will go to the state of Florida that governs real estate agents. And they will set up a type of mediation and get involved to help uh, mitigate that. So I always tell people it's best to put it with a real estate brokerage. But the flip side is, are the real estate brokers don't want to hold it because they don't want the liability. No. They don't make money on holding escrow, so they don't want to. So now they turn to a title company or a real estate attorney, which are the two other pillars. So okay. pillar one are the real estate agents. Pillar two are the attorneys. And the difference with the attorneys is legal advice and fighting legal claims cost them nothing. So if a real estate attorney is holding the escrow and there's a dispute, Sometimes the attorney will just make the determination to give it back to one party or the other. 
And as soon as they're served with a legal demand, they just respond in their daily routine. Right. Now you go to a title company, the title company is different because we are an independent third party. I like to make sure people understand that. We are not representing the buyer and we are not representing the seller. We are representing the transaction. Excellent. So there's a dispute. Clients come to me all the time, good clients of mine. I want to put a claim on the deposit. And I said, I appreciate that, but I cannot automatically release it to you because I have a fiduciary duty to the other side that if they do not agree. So from a title company perspective, you either need to agree to release it, agree to negotiate a release. So maybe 50, 50, give the seller a thousand dollars and get back $3,000. Uh, you need to negotiate or you have to move to small claims court and get a judge to decide who gets that money back. So and that's a long process. <laughs> it's a way. long process and we're holding money for years for disputes that we continue to follow up on. And for a thousand dollar deposit, it's not worth going to court over, but yeah. I am not allowed. People have to realize as a title company. So don't put the money with me. I always tell them, put it with a real estate agent. <laughs> you have a much better chance of getting that money back in a dispute than putting it with a title company because we can try and convince the parties to negotiate almost like a mediate the deal. Right. But we have a fiduciary to both sides where, you know, you look at these attorney owned title companies and the attorney is typically representing one side or the other, usually the side that's paying for title. And I think that's a little bit of a conflict of interest. I agree. They need to step out of the, uh, attorney role and make sure they step into the, the, the role of managing the money and looking out for both parties. I agree with you. Absolutely. And one of the things I just want to clarify here and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, Kevin, I know that for attorneys, I believe they don't get audited or with their escrows, with the monies if they're sitting in the account, but the title companies do. So that's an extra layer of, I, I find an extra layer of security uh, am I right about this or? Yeah, I mean, you, we go back a long time. So you probably remember me speaking about that at an event. And that was many years ago before it was, you know, if you look at the history and one of the books that we wrote, we went through a lot of fraud cases. And in all the fraud cases, it wasn't title companies creating fraud. It was the attorneys because the title companies are under much higher regulation. So those times have changed. Good. Once the market took a decline, the underwriters now require the attorneys that write title to submit their, their bank reconciliation for audit. But one of the things that to realize, and you know, our audits are done monthly and they're done on the first of every month. So wow. my bank reconciliations, and I'm sure you're familiar with that because you know, you're in the tax side of it, right. is my bank reconciliations are done the first of every month, not the Excellent. 15th, not the 30th. Uh, and we actually balance daily. So we go through the month and we reconcile every single day. So at the end of the month, click of a button. If our balance matches, we know where we're at. And one of the things I like to say is there are a lot of even title companies that are three months or six months behind. Because I talk to some of these underwriters and to go after them is very difficult. So it's a catch-22 because they want the premium because they want to earn the income on the title insurance. Correct. but they're not up to, to par on their audit and it's very scary. So I always tell one of the tips to tell people is ask your title company, how far out are they on their audit? Are they up to, up to date? Are they monthly? Are they two months behind and find out because if you're using a title company that doesn't uh, balance daily, you're in the wrong business because they make it so easy now with software and companies that even do it for them. That's There's right. never an excuse to not balance daily, to know if money is missing, if maybe a wire didn't go out, if you received a credit that uh, maybe you didn't know about. So it's, uh, it's very important to balance daily. That's great. Kevin, you, you, so far you have offered so much uh, you know, incredible tips and, and, and all your knowledge that you have, like you said, in 15 years that you've been uh, doing this on a daily basis. And, and I think that's so helpful. Um, how can the audience reach you? Again, your contact information, that way they know they can um, reach out to you, please. Yeah, I always tell people the best thing is to just go to my website. If you go to my website, all of our contact is there. Uh, we do a 
uh, Tuesday newsletter called Title Tuesdays. It's a video newsletter on our YouTube channel, but all of the videos and the links are on our website. Uh, so they could subscribe to that and go back. This week was our 101st episode. Congratulations. So, I remember. I made 101 a weeks. It's I, tough. Yes, I know it is. And it's kind of funny that, that because I came across after all this time with your video. So your video really ranked high. And I just saw the 100th episode. And I said, oh, congratulations, Kevin. That's amazing. Uh, I think I'm, by the way, I'm not too far from you, know, <laughs> but 60-something. <laughs> so I've been doing uh, the YouTube channel now. Oh, my God, like for six years now. Uh, but it wasn't until recently I started adding more. And part of my podcast, a lot of people that look at my YouTube channel, they don't realize after a while that it's really a podcast. What happened was that I... You know, it was a fair deal that my subscribers, you know, in the YouTube channel will get to see the interview instead of just listening to it, right? Because it's a different kind of audience. So uh, I definitely would try to keep everyone as happy as possible. But Kevin, it's been amazing, you know, uh, conversation with you. And, and uh, any other uh, tip that you want to leave at the end? Or I know you're an author too, your book author. So if you want to mention that, uh, where they can probably buy your book and, and hopefully get even, you know, more information. Yeah, absolutely. So the website is triple W title rate. So don't go to independence title because that's a company out in Texas. It's title rate, R A T E.com. And on the website, I have all of my books available for download. We have title insurance tips and secrets. I have a motivational quote book. I have several books that are on there. Our YouTube channel Our we just launched our new Instagram campaign, which is all about educating people and try and reach the masses. So that's a good a way they can reach out. And then we have our closing cost calculator, which we're very famous for on that website as well, that people can download and, and calculate closing costs, see what they're going to be. So, you know, the website is usually that central hub. And then I ask people, subscribe to YouTube or Instagram and comment, send us a direct message. I monitor it personally myself. So I get back to each and every person and, and try and just help them educate and learn a wealth of knowledge. Because for me, it's all about education. If I can teach you something you didn't know yesterday, I've accomplished my job. And at one day, when it's your time to buy a piece of property, you're going to call me to facilitate it because you're going to know where the go-to person. And that is so true, Kevin. I, I have to agree with you 100% on that one. And I think that a lot of people don't realize that they say, well, what would give out this free content and so much information is because we really want to educate. We want to help, you know, the, the, the people out there. And, you know, if you can avoid making a mistake, by all means, uh, you know, get someone who's going to be an expert and understands what they're doing. And Kevin's here to help all of you. So if you are in the process of closing, a, you know, property, by all means, reach out to him. Um, like I said, I know him personally. I know he's done a phenomenal service. He's still around. That's a big plus. Uh, so Kevin, once again, it's really a true pleasure. And uh, like I said, I hope we stay in touch. And uh, definitely at least people know where, where to reach out to you. So thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. You're very welcome. Thanks for the invite. I appreciate it. It is. Thank you and a lot of success to you. And to everyone else, thank you for watching. Remember to like and share and stay connected with us. Thank you.